Although true believers can be sure of their salvation, they are nonetheless in real and great danger. That's Philip's uh, commentary that we have to be aware. That's why Hebrews 6 says, talks about um, if we have experienced the goodness of the Lord, the power, the glory of God, and the, and the, 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 the reality of the power of the Holy Spirit, etc., and, and fought away, it's impossible to be restored back to, to Christ because we're crucifying Christ all over again, publicly putting him to shame. This is such a sober warning. And uh, I'm expounding that on this uh, today uh, in uh, New Jersey Church. So I want, just want to say, related with that, the commentary says we live in a world that is perilous to faith in Christ. Perilous. It's a peril. Our faith in Christ is perilous. Perilous. If you live in the Christ, trying to live on your faith, you know that the struggle you can have, the values of hostility, the hostility, the, you know, the world being hostile towards our faith and all this, you can feel it. And Jesus felt it throughout his life on earth. He's persecuted all the time. Okay, that's why real Christians will face even more persecutions, more hostility. And that's a reality we need to know and face and to grow through it and in it. In fact, as a matter of fact, I will argue that if you don't face any of this uh, hostility in the world, you may, you may want to ask, what is wrong with my faith that attracts no? No oppositions, you know. The writer of Hebrews, they describe it as a harbor where the current pulls hard out to sea. If we're not anchorly firmed, we can be dragged away. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. That is a reality. We can be drift. The word used is drift. Drift is a subtle word. It's a dangerous word because you don't know when you start drifting. Uh huh. When you get pulled out immediately by big waves, you know it, and you're gonna scream and yell for help, okay? But when you drift, it could be slow drift. You didn't know it. You're not aware of it. That's dangerous. That's why you need to know, have the truth of the Word of God anchor you in the truth. Once these things happen, you, begin, you already know it, and then you begin to fight it, begin to resist it, begin to seek for help, and uh, for the refuge and everything else. Okay, so that's why that's why Peter writes, "Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour." First Peter five eight. The devil prowls around seeking for someone to devour. If you are not watchful, you can be the next victim for it, because it is vulnerable. It's very hostile. The forces that we fight is, is not, is not uh, human power. This, this, this is supernatural, spiritual. You can't even explain it. They're coming, hammering you. Before you know it, you get worn out or discouraged or distracted. So that's why we need to bring out the, the, host, the, par, the perils of living in a hostile world in a, a secular age. First Peter 1.5 Christian life takes place within the context of grave danger. Grave danger. That is Christian life. That's the context. The context of grave danger. That we, we got to know. Well, the New Testament speaks of assurance. Okay. Um, this is why it never allows for sloth or complacency. We can't have sloth or complacency because there will be problematic. Because once it's slothful or sluggish, complacency is a deadly disease. That's why we have to go to church every Sunday to worship the Lord and listen to the Word of God. That the Word of God cleanses and purifies us and encourages and strengthens us. Hallelujah. The matter of bearing fruit is a serious one, okay? So, this is uh, the word of the Lord.